Writing is the third subtest in the written exams and definitely the most challenging for Filipino candidates. Later, I'll give you an idea of the national average grade of Filipinos in writing as compared to the requirement for your visa application. So writing is the only subtest that is further subdivided into two parts. Task 2 is exactly the same for both academic and general training candidates, but what about writing task 1? There's this difference. So, if you are taking the academic module, writing task 1, statistical writing. You're given a line graph, bar graph, pie chart table, diagram, and based on this, you're supposed to write at least 150 words. For the general training candidates, writing task 1, letter writing either a formal or informal letter say minimum requirement at least 150 words but like what i've said whether academic or general training it's exactly the same writing task too and what is this essay writing you're given a theme or a topic and based on this you're supposed to write at least 250 words now everyone take note of the minimum 150 in task one and 250 in task two why? If you fail to reach the minimum number of words, you're given penalty for under length. So whatever happens, do everything in your capacity to reach the minimum in the actual examination. Class, what about the time limit? Test supervisors will give you one hour for the writing subtest. If you look at the test booklet, it says you're given 20 minutes for task 1, 40 minutes for task 2. But test supervisors do not necessarily follow that. What is it that they do? They give you one hour to finish both task one and task two. And take note, it doesn't really matter how many minutes you spend for each task. So whether you spend 30 minutes for each, it really doesn't matter. What's more important, both of them are completed in one hour. What about the value? Task one, 33% of your grade. Task two, 66%. If that is the case, I want you to think about it. Which task is more important? Is it task one or task two? Definitely, it's writing task two. That's why we recommend to everyone to start the actual examination with writing task two. Why? Imagine if you're able to finish task two, but you're not able to finish task one. Then obviously, you expect a deduction. But kindly compare the deduction. If you finish task one, but you're not able to finish task two, the deduction is twice as much. That is why for everyone to know, we recommend you start with writing task two. Now, what about the passing score? I repeatedly mentioned that IELTS is not a pass or fail examination. So you have to double check which band score is needed for that specific visa you're applying for. But if you get seven, you're quite safe in applying for most of the visa options worldwide. What about the main problems? If I may give you an idea, for the writing subtest, there are four criteria. Task achievement and task response. What is the national average of Filipinos for task achievement writing task one? It's a disappointing 5.3. What about the national average for task response? Writing task two criterion, 6.0. The second criterion, this one assesses the organization and the flow of your essay. Coherence and cohesion, CC. What's the national average? Task 1, 5.8. Task 2, 6.2. So if you'll notice, Filipinos do better in coherence and cohesion as compared to task achievement and task response. But if your target is 6.5 or 7, the national average for the first two criteria are nowhere near 7. The last two criteria, vocabulary and grammar, they are the ones assessed in both writing and speaking. So what about the national average of Filipinos for vocabulary? Writing task 1, that's 6.3. Writing task 2, 7.0. The last criterion, grammatical range and accuracy. What's our national average in writing task 1? That is 6.3. What about writing task 2? Or rather, I mixed it up a little bit. Writing task 1 is 6.2, whereas writing task 2 is 6.3. If you look at this one, and if you get the average, knowing that for writing task 1, it's 33%, and writing task 2, it's 66%, the national average grade of Filipinos in writing, 6.2 to 6.3. 
So ask yourself, do you consider yourself an average Filipino whose writing skill is also average? Then expect that in the actual examination, your grade is near 6.2 or 6.3. That's why it's a bit challenging if you're going to the UK because UK requires 6.5 in writing if you're a nurse. But if you're targeting Australia, Ireland, or New Zealand, that's when you need a 7 in writing. I'm letting you know the national average and the statistics because it will help you on focusing. Especially because we do better in vocabulary as a nation. So that's not really the criterion I want you to focus on. Notice, the first criterion is the one pulling us down. So for our review sessions, we focus on the first two criteria, the weaknesses of Filipinos according to big bosses of IELTS in Asia, because that's when I learned when I attended the international conference in Shanghai, December 1 to 5 of 2017. So if you want to know more how you can improve your performance in the first two criteria, we're a message away. You can visit NinerOnlineReview.com or you can message us on Facebook, Irvin Neal temporal or 9.09 or IELTS Review Center. Yes, it is challenging, but I want you to know that nothing good ever comes easy. Easy things are not great and great things are not easy. In reality, you have to take the stairs and I hope that you will choose someone to guide you in climbing the stairs. Once again, this is Irvin Neal temporal of 9.09.